everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I want to be going over our weekly NCLEX question. And don't forget to check out our other free resources to help you study for NCLEX. So let's get started. A patient is post-op from a gastric resection for treatment of peptic ulcer disease. One hour after eating meals, the patient exhibits diaphoresis, tachycardia, and hypotension. In addition, the patient reports feeling abdominal cramps, weakness, and nausea. Which options below can be incorporated in the patient's plan of care to help alleviate the patient's signs and symptoms? Select all that apply. A, wait 30 minutes after meals to consume liquids. B, sit up for 30 minutes after eating. C, consume high amounts of dairy products daily. D, eat five to six small meals a day rather than three large meals. And E, when symptoms present, eat cold or hot foods to help decrease symptoms. Okay, so based on our scenario, we need to be asking ourselves, what is happening to our patient based on what we're seeing and their signs and symptoms? We are seeing classic dumping syndrome. And how do we know that? Well, there's some things in that scenario that should be jumping out at you. The first thing is the gastric resection. The patient had a peptic ulcer, so for treatment, they had a gastric resection. Now, what is a gastric resection? This is where they go in and they remove the disease portion of the stomach. And for the patient's case, it was a peptic ulcer lesion. So they removed it and then they reconnected it to the small intestine. However, this is gonna cause problems for the patient because normally, whenever they had their whole stomach, when they ate food, the food would set in the stomach, be churned and broke down slightly, and then it would slowly enter the small intestine. All, everything was great but now they're missing part of that stomach. So it's losing that ability to churn that food and to break it down. Instead, it's going to rapidly enter into that small intestine. Hence, it's gonna be dumped in there too soon. And what's really gonna cause our problem is that this food that they ate, especially if they ate really rich sugary foods and consumed a lot of liquids, it's gonna go into that small intestine prematurely and it's going to act as this like hypertonic solution and we learned in our hypertonic hypotonic solution videos what do hypertonic solutions do they like to pull the water from everywhere else to itself so as all that sugary hypertonic solution is in that small intestine what's it going to do it's going to pull all that fluid which is going to cause all these signs and symptoms that this patient is exhibiting so you can have early dumping, which can present about 30 minutes after the patients eat, or you can have late dumping, which can present anywhere from an hour, three, four hours after they eat. So what's happening is that the hypertonic solution hits that small intestine, that causes a major fluid shift. So all this fluid is gonna go rapidly to that small intestine. Small intestines are going to swell, which is gonna cause that abdominal cramping, then they're gonna start getting some hypotension and tachycardia because you have that fluid shift and that's gonna cause the blood pressure to drop and the heart's gonna to try to compensate by increasing itself to get the blood where it needs to go. Then what's gonna happen is because that fluid is so rich in sugar, it's gonna stimulate the pancreas to release insulin and then you're gonna get a drop in blood sugar hypoglycemia, and that's really in late dumping. So the patient is going to sweat from this. They can even get more tachycardic, and they're gonna get weak and nauseous and feel very, very yucky. So this question wants to know, what can we incorporate in our patient's plan of care to help decrease these symptoms? Because if you've ever taken care of a patient who's there for gastric surgery or have had, or have had a gastric resection, they can experience dumping syndrome, it's common, but you can do some things and teach the patient how to do some things to decrease those signs and symptoms. So let's look at our options. Okay, A, wait 30 minutes after meals to consume liquids. Yes, definitely, definitely wanna do that. Why? 
Well, our goal is to limit the amount of volume of solution or GI contents that's going to enter into that small intestine, be dumped in there, because remember, it's bypassing majority of the stomach. So when a person eats foods and then they drink liquids with their foods, that's just increasing the volume in the stomach. So what we want them to do is eat, and then 30 minutes later, then consume their liquids. So definitely will help with that. Okay, B, sit up for 30 minutes after eating. No, we actually want them to lie down for 30 minutes after eating. Why? Because this helps slow the whole gastric emptying process. But sitting up wouldn't really help. Lying down, a lot of patients report relief with that. So that would not be one of our answers. Okay, C, consume high amounts of dairy products daily. No, dairy products tend to cause a lot of gastric distress in patients. Sometimes patients are lactose intolerant and they can get diarrhea. So it's good to avoid these types of foods. Instead, they really want to incorporate high amounts of protein and complex carbohydrates because this takes the body a longer time to break down and it'll have to do this as it goes throughout the system and it helps stabilize the blood sugar. So we really want them to avoid dairy products until later on they can try a small amount out and see how they tolerate them and simple carbs and sugary things because remember the reason we're getting a lot of this is because that high amount of sugar content is entering into that small intestine and pulling that fluid. So that is not one of our answers. Okay, D, eat five to six small meals a day rather than three large meals. Yes, because again, our goal is to limit the amount of volume that's entering in that stomach during a certain time. So we would like for them to eat five small meals a day rather than three huge ones. That's a lot going to be dumped into the stomach causing problems. So definitely that. And let's look at our last option, E. When symptoms present, eat cold or hot foods to decrease symptoms. No, they would not want to do this because actually eating colds that are foods that are really cold or really hot, that actually increases gastric motility and emptying, and we actually want to slow that process down. So we rather them eat room temperature foods or warm temperature. They don't need to just eat something super, super cold, like ice cream or something really hot, like hot chocolate, because that's gonna increase gastric emptying. So we wouldn't want to do that. Therefore, our answers are A and D. And this wraps up our NCLEX review question of the week. And don't forget to check out our other NCLEX resources to help you prep. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.